Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for giving me some information about yourself while we're waiting. They wanted me to wait a few more minutes before we actually started. Um, this is very weird. Um, I'm used to seeing faces uh, coming from, you know, the virtual world. I'm sure many of you have been in because I'm, I'm looking at the comments um, and many of you teach. Um, so we've all been in the same place this semester or this last year, I guess. I did give everybody permission to talk because I am not used to not talking to people. Uh, I'm used to having a class full of students. So um, please, please feel free to stop me and ask any question. Um, I, I do not mind, that's how I roll in my classroom and I wanna treat this just like my classroom. So welcome from Texas. I see people from Texas. I see some Louisianians, uh, Washington State. Welcome. Um, another Louisianian business teachers, Florida. We should be in Florida right now for this conference. Um, St. Augustine. Uh, I see Amanda is moving to St. Augustine. Um, visited, I have a daughter in Orlando right now. She is uh, finishing up school and um, we visited St. Augustine a couple of times, I actually camped in St. Augustine. Beautiful. Uh, plan to go back again. Uh, we loved it there. RVing. Yes. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully we, uh, I don't, I didn't miss anybody, but like I said, please, please, please um, ask and stop any questions that you might have. I have two screens going on. If you haven't realized that I'm looking at another screen while I'm looking at you as well. Um, so welcome to Certified. Um, we are going to be talking about today um, how to capture um, what our students know with Screencastify. If any of you have, well, not say any of you, all of you have been in the virtual situation. And one of the biggest issues I have found um, in this year and a half is actually seeing what they know. Um, and so here's a little do you sometimes feel like this when you're looking at student work? And please let me know if you cannot hear this. Nighttime. Daytime. Nighttime. Daytime. Shouldn't have had that 12th coffee. I can't even blink anymore. And I can hear my heart beat in my ears. I don't get it. Hey, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 one hundred. Come in, ready. What? What's going on? Oh, hang on, on. Who's hiding and who's seeking? I'm seeking. I'm seeking. I'm, I'm seeking. seeking. I'm seeking. Oh, my word. That is amazing. Seven, six hundred twenty-eight. Sir, what time is it? It's four twenty-five. Four twenty-six. <laughs> Tick. Talk. Tick. Talk. <laughs> I think we've all been in that situation and sometimes whew, we just got to get through to the next day or the next hour, right? So I want to tell you a little bit about what Screen Castify is. I'm sure you all have used some type of screen recording software. Um, I just like Screen Castify because of some of the features that it has that it records straight to Chrome. And I can, we use in, in our state, um, in our district, we use um, Google Classroom. And so everything just so nicely integrates into Google Classroom uh, that it just makes my life a whole lot easier when we can just use this, uh, this recording app. Now, I am not gonna really go into, uh, in the slide presentation, you will see uh, how to set Screencastify up. I'm really not gonna do that for you. Um, if you'd like me to, if you have a question and you'd like me to do something or show you something, please ask and I will gladly do that for you. Um, but I have put in here step-by-step step how to actually set up Screencastify for you. Um, you can share using your Google Drive, you can share to YouTube, you can share as a link. It integrates greatly, uh, sup uh, super into Google Classroom. And I love it for that, for that point. Anybody need me to actually show you how to set it up? Uh, you can chat or you can talk. I gave everybody uh, the ability to talk. All you just have to do is unmute yourself. Um, 
just let me know and I will absolutely go through how to set it up. But I think the majority of us as teachers, if we aren't using it already, have already used it something like this, something like this. All right, I didn't get any response from anybody. So it is super easy to set up, but in my slide presentation, um, it actually tells you exactly how to do the setup on your computer. Okay. So I'm gonna get to the fun stuff of how I use it in my classroom and not just me, but um, those of us at our school. And I know most of us are tech teachers uh, or business teachers of some kind. So um, I will show you what, how I use it, but again, you know, share it with someone else in your community, in your school, who might want some other um, ideas about how to use it. So I'm just gonna kinda go through. All right, so here are a few ways to use Screencastify. Now I have linked in this presentation, lots and lots and lots and lots of videos um, that you can go back and reference that will allow you to see uh, other ways to use Screencastify or any kind of uh, recording device. So one of the big ways that I use it, of course, um, when we went in the spring of 2020, the school year, we um, absolutely went home. Uh, we got a, my students knew we were going home on March 13th before I knew we were going home. We are very fortunate in our, in our district that we have one-to-one. -one. So we went home and about a week and a half later, we went online. Wow, that was an experience to say the least. Um, and so what I use Screencastify for at that point, we, we did meet Google Meet, but they did ask us to also do tutorials as well. So I did video tutorials. That's exactly what I did. Um, and then we used it for professional development as well this past year. Uh, we did not meet in person. Uh, I think we met in person just before school let out uh, one time, twice uh, in our big gym. So we got to socially distance, um, but we used it for professional development as well. Uh, you can use it to flip your classroom. You can use it for reinforcement enrichment, just independent study. Uh, I use it for reinforcement. Like I said, I do the video tutorials and that gives reinforcement. I look at student work and I say, oh, this is what they struggled on. Let me do a little bit of a reinforcement piece. And uh, then that way it, they have it online to do. You know, as a teacher, we cannot always get to everybody. It's just impossible when you have 30 kids in a classroom um, so them being able to go and go back and look at what they did is, is key for them, is key for them. Uh, I am also teaching, I see someone is teaching summer school. I am also doing a summer program, um, and I'm teaching Adobe, some Adobe classes. Um, it's a pretty cool program. Um, and so I've been using it a lot as well during the summer. Hi, my name is. All right. So some ways, other ways to use Screencastify, okay? And I gave you this great, great uh, video. It's about using closed captioning and, and using it in different language languages, which is a fantastic video. You can go back and look at it, but you can narrate a slideshow. This is what they did. They narrated the slideshow to show you how to set up uh, the PowerPoint to get to, um, show for different languages is really great. Super. So you can narrate Google Slides or PowerPoint. You can read a story. You can have your students read a story. You can read a story to your students. Um, you can demonstrate a foreign language. We have um, both of our French and Spanish classes have been doing this at our school. And they demonstrate how um, the speaking. So the students are speaking on online. Uh, I mean, on Screencastify to them so they can understand oh, that they're getting it. Uh, we can demonstrate for lower grade sight words or new vocabulary. And this is one that I just found um, about doing a virtual field trip. I thought it was the coolest idea. Um, 
as I, I was telling you, I'm teaching uh, during the summer right now. And as I was talking to my students, we are supposed to, uh, during this program, we are supposed to be uh, going on a field trip. Well, obviously COVID, you know, canceled that for us. So we um, are doing a virtual field trip and we'll be doing that next week or this week, actually, this is our last week. So um, I found this and not only did we, or can we go on the virtual field trip, but I can have the students talk about the virtual field trip via Screencastify. So they can go back for me um, and tell me, you know, what they learned, where they went, those kinds of things. Or what about a history class? Your history class, um, you're teaching about, you know, North America, Europe, whatever. And they can go on this virtual field trip and tell you about all these different places. I thought that was a really great idea. And I plan to use that a little bit more in my classroom as well. Any questions so far? I feel like I'm just blah, talking to myself. <laughs> All right. And that's the video. I'm not going to play it, but you have access to it. Um, you can also see students explain their understanding or show their understanding. So they can speak or demonstrate their understanding. Um, they could show how they produce the solution to a problem. So if you're in a math class and they, they can actually physically show you how you, they got from point A to point B, um, which is awesome. Um, they can use a digital whiteboard. This is a link to the digital whiteboard right there and how to use it. It's a really good tutorial. This, um, this gentleman who does these tutorials is really good. Um, and believe it or not, and I've learned this in the COVID world, it helps prevent cheating, okay? My class is very hands-on. I teach Adobe, I teach Photoshop, um, Illustrator, InDesign, and Premiere. And uh, if uh, we were hybrid this past year, so I had students in class and I had students at home. And so when they were at home, I never knew what I could tell they were doing. I didn't know, I have Illuminate. We watched them as best we could but we didn't always know. But what I would make them do is um, screen cast their screen. So I could always go back if I, if I thought they were cheating or I thought somebody else was doing their work, I would make them put their video in the corner. So I'd watch them and I could see what they were doing. Um, it's pretty awesome to be able to do that. Uh, you know, our students would never cheat. I know that. But, you know, sometimes you just got to be on the safe side, right? So um, some of those other ways, and again, super way to use the whiteboard. Um, in, uh, and this is a great tutorial to show you how to do that. All right. This is how I personally use Screencastify in my classroom. When I teach Photoshop, um, when the students are working, if they're in the classroom, I obviously can watch them and see what they're doing. However, 30 of them at the same time is pretty difficult. And if you're dealing with a student on their own, uh, you kind of miss out on the other stuff. Y'all totally understand that. So when they turn in a project, this is what I get. I get a finished project. I can't see how they got there. I can't see what they did to get there. I can't tell if they clicked around 100 million times before they finished. So what I do is um, I make them, and I don't make them screencast the whole project. Don't get me wrong. I make them sp screencast certain pieces of it. Um, for those of you who teach Adobe, uh, the old Adobe was, um, they wanted you to, for the test, the certification test, they wanted you to give very specific uh, items to do it a certain way. And so I never could, this is this way using screencasting, I could tell that they were doing it that the specific way they wanted it. But this is how I used it. So now I, I didn't make them talk. I didn't make them explain, but I can absolutely see them getting from point A to point B. How did they get there? What did they do? Um, what processes did they use? What, you know, did they use panels? Did they use the menu? Did they use, you know, how they did it? And then I can, I can fix those problems that they had. And if I saw it, and yes, it's a lot of watching, don't get me wrong, a lot of grading, a lot of watching, but it so helps. Um, and, you know, I have 
pretty good success with certifications because I can kind of pinpoint what the students are doing and how they're getting there. This is the, this is probably other than the tutorials, this is probably one of the uh, best ways or most of the way that I use it. Okay. As you saw in the beginning in my video, um, those of you who were here earlier, you um, noticed we did voice dubbing. Um, actually, people were talking for those animals. So you can add a voice to an existing video. Sometimes that could be a fun project. Uh, when we do video work, Premiere, um, that's one of the ways I kind of start. I give them something, I give them a video, and then I make them use that video to do some voiceovers um, to give, give some ideas and to retranslate or reinterpret a story or a movie or a video. Um, you can add commentary. You can play a video um, full tab or mute it. So when we, we do this dubbing, you can, it's endless, endless of the stuff that you can do when we're dubbing. So another option of what can we can do with it. All right, uh, our band teachers this year have really come a long way with screencasting. They have, they are having their students record um, their actual performances, their practices, their band um, songs, whatever. Um, our choir teacher has done the same thing. Uh, this year. And so they are using that to help to make sure to give them students feedback because obviously you know, they haven't been in the classroom or they've been at home. And so we're trying to integrate that hybrid life uh, between the two. Um, I'm hoping we won't have a hybrid life next year. Hybrid was, um, it was, uh, uh, it's all, I, I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, okay. Um, I had a question that came through. It says, is this the free version of Screencastify? Um, actually, I have the paid version and I'm going to talk to you about it in just a second, but there is a, a free version and I'll, I'll, I will definitely touch on that in just a second. So you can have them record their speech. Um, you can have them record, you know, themselves. You can have them. It was good for those shy or nervous students. We have them. They don't want to talk. They don't want to say anything. And when um, you teach Premiere, I teach a, um, a, a broadcasting class. I have students who don't want to get in front of the camera. Believe me, I get it because I don't like getting in front of the camera either. Ha, <laughs> and I'm in front of a camera. Um, but it helps those students um, get out, get, get away from that shyness and that nervousness. Now, um, I, I I don't, I do not only teach, but I do, um, I'm, I was a vocal major when I was in, in college. Um, so I hate listening to myself. That is one of the biggest, uh, pet peeves that I have, but I have to get over that and do it. And it, do, it did help. It does help me better everything that I do. My, my, my performance, my, you know, diction, my, all those things that go with voice, same as a teacher. We do not like watching ourselves teach. I can tell you, I will not go back and watch this video. I can't, I can't watch myself teach. It drives me insane. Um, but we do and we get over it and we get better just by doing those, those things. And of course, when we uh, perform in front of a camera, it also gives us that repetition. We can record, we can redo it, we can do it again and so on. All right. I know I feel like I'm blowing and going, but any questions, comments, concerns? Do I need to reteach anything? <laughs> All right, so this is the other great thing that I love about Screencastify. And I do use this feature as well. Um, I, I, you know, the way of the world, I guess I can say it's just the way of the world. Students don't want to read. They want it visual. They want it in front of their face. So I do find that if I can give them verbal feedback in a video format, when I'm talking to them, they react to it better than if they have to read it physically on paper as I'm writing notes or I'm writing comments in the comment section. So here's an example. I'm just going to play this real briefly. So you can kind of see this is a 
English example, by the way, um, just so you can kind of see what she does. Hi, Kate. So I'm here with your infographic that you made using Google Drawings. So visually, this looks pretty good. Um, and you've got some interesting graphics and um, pictures, photographs from the Boston, bo Boston Marathon bombings. Um, so I, I guess a couple of things. First of all, your writing is, you know, spot on in terms of the amount of writing and what you wrote until you get to here. And basically, we keep in mind that there should be. I think you got it. I hope. So you kind of see how that can really, really, really help. Um, the least. Sorry, click the wrong button. Um, but a great way using that information, verbally giving them the feedback. It's just like you being in the classroom. So you're sitting in the classroom and you're watching a student do some work and you're verbally giving them that feedback. You can't do that times 30. I can't. Maybe y'all are uh, super teachers. I don't know. Um, but I can't do that times 30. So if I can watch what they do and see what they do and give them that feedback, it makes a world of difference. It is super. Um, I love that feature of Screencastify. Something I never thought about um, until... COVID and we went home. Um, teachers never, nice. Teachers, uh, parents, sorry, parents and teachers, parents always like communication and they're just as bad as the kids. They're just as bad. They want it on the spot. They don't want to read. They want to hear it. And so here's another way to communicate with the parent. Um, so we're starting a new assignment. And for those of you, uh, I, some of my assignments are very large and they take, they may take a week to complete. Um, so these assignments obviously give more weight, have more weight than other things that we do in the classroom. So I can visually do a video and I will tell you, I don't do these things, but they're, they're good features. And I think I am going to incorporate, but to go in and physically screencast this assignment. We are starting an assignment on, um, I don't know, whatever the topic is for the day. And this is what the expectations are. Here's my rubric. Here's what I expect, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you explain it to the parent. Um, so there's no, there's no excuse. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening. There it is. Okay. Now, to get them to actually watch it sometimes, I said that. That's a whole nother issue. But anyway, um, some of that positive communication, you know, parents like positive communication. They like positive feedback. So instead of just sending a note home, send a little video. Hey, Mrs. Johnson, Jacob did great today in school. Let me, sh let me tell you what he did. He actually excelled at whatever task we were on. Okay. Um, primary school side. You know, we have to send home parent newsletters. We can also record those parent newsletters. Okay. And then um, how about you are the student telling the parent about their big accomplishment for the day? We are in the world of video. We can pull out our phone super fast and we can record something. We know that. Okay. Students record everything that ever happens at school. And that's usually how I find out about it. Hey, Ms. Johnson, did you know that such and such? No, nope, don't want to, nope, nope, too much information. Um, but how about turning it around and letting the students record that accomplishment? Hey, mom, let me show you what I did today. Right? Hold it up and, and tell about it. So not only are they um, telling their parent they did something great today, they're reteaching it and telling them how I got to that accomplishment or how I got to that thing. So um, also a great way to use Screencastify. All right. So um, Screencastify has this new platform they just added. I say just, not just, but recently. Um, you can go through and uh, they give you some tutorial lessons in there. And then you get this nice little cute little badge that, you know, you can add to your, your signature. Um, but this one is pretty good. And I, I'm not teaching anything about it because it's all about Google. 
and some of us don't use Google platform, but I wanted you to have this opportunity to go through and you go to screencastify.com and you click on resources, I think is what it says. And this one's called genius. And Alice Keeler is pretty super awesome. And notice it's 45 minutes, not very long. Uh, but she incorporates Google and Screencastify and beautifully and merges it. And some of this, uh, some of this information that I'm sharing, I did get from her, but she goes into detail and explains it. Um, so I wanted to share this to you or share this so you can um, have access to it as well. I loved it. I thought it was a great little class. All right, so here's the question about the versions. Okay, so there is a free version that everybody can get. Um, it allows, um, students can get it, everybody can get it. It allows five minutes of limit per recording. And I think you can do have 20 recordings in your, uh, your folder at a time, the free version. Um, my students use a free version. We do not use a paid version. We as teachers, our district buys uh, the unlimited version for us, which also allows us to store our stuff. It uh, records, um, it allows us to record unlimited. So unlimited amount of time. I can do an hour's worth of lesson, which I would never do, or I can do five seconds. Okay, so um, whatever we need. What I have to do with the free version for my students though, because sometimes the, whatever I have them recording, it takes a little longer than five minutes. So I have to break it up in increments. So I know that they should be able to do this task in five minutes. So I might have part one, part two, part three, part four, whatever the case may be. And this also tells me that if they couldn't get it done in five minutes, then maybe they need to practice it a little bit more. Or if they couldn't get it done in five minutes, then they need to do it again and again and again. And I don't know, again, okay? And guess what? Repetition, what does repetition do? Repetition makes it better. They get it, they understand it, and they doing it over and over and over again. Really awesome. Um, so they only get five minutes. So you just gotta be very careful with that free version, but it really can work beautifully. Uh, but 49 bucks a year is not that bad for the unlimited. Um, if you have a district where, again, I'm very fortunate to be in a district that I am, and we are given money at the beginning of the year to spend on whatever we need in our classroom. This is what I used to do with mine. Now the district, um, gives it to me, uh, for free. So that's awesome. Uh, with the unlimited version, we can edit. So I can, let's say I started a, um, you know, I was creating a lesson and, you know, I got stopped. So I can, or some, you know, something happened, or I stuttered, or, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Happens all the time. So I can go in and take that out and, and um, you know, merge it together and edit it through. Uh, the other thing they added, and I'm going to honestly tell you, I have not really gotten into this submit thing. But from what I understand, it allows students to video on their phone, and it's done via an app. So they don't even need um, like to download it or anything. It's done via an app and it sends it straight to wherever you're supposed to send it. So if the teacher has a, um, you know, a, a login or whatever, I'm not 100% sure about how it works, but from what I understand, it is pretty cool. And I'm going to, I'm going to research that um, a little bit more as the days go on. Um, so any questions? I know I've, been rambling and haven't asked if anybody has any questions. I know y'all been throwing stuff out at me. I have a question. Sure. And you, and you may have covered this, but so on the free version where they have the limited amount, if they go in there and delete like prior recordings, then can they still make more? Yep. Okay. So all they got to do is delete and keep recording. Absolutely. It's a nice feature. And I'm going to show you in a minute a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to get into my screen, um, my Screencastify. But one of the great things I like Screencastify also is that it automatically saves to a Screencastify folder in my Google Drive. So 
I record it. It and I kind of did this at the beginning and I didn't go through that and I can go back if you'd like, but um, it records it and it shoots it straight to that folder and I can link straight from that folder into my Google Classroom or I can share it to my student. Um, there were some things I really wanted to share with you. Unfortunately, my district has me locked down and I can't, it's a nightmare for me to try to share stuff with you and then I got to get permission and so I'm like, never mind, I'm not even going to try. Um, but if you are interested in any of that, at the end, my email is there. Um, please email me and I will gladly talk you through some of this other stuff. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't claim to be, I know everything about Screencastify, but um, I love talking with others that use it and, and come up with different ideas um, out there how to use it. So... Anybody else? Did anybody out there use Screencastify already? Or some screen screen recording device? Whether it be any of them, there's a ton, there's a bunch now. And every day there's more. Anybody use it in a different way than what I have, uh, have used it? Somebody uses WeVideo. Screen ca Camtasia. Camtasia has come out. Camtasia used to be really difficult uh, to deal with, but they have come up with some really nice features. Um, I have a, um, a master's in ed tech, and that's what they made us use for a master's program was Camtasia. And when I did it, and that's only been, I say, uh, four years ago, three, five years ago, uh, it was, wow, really overwhelming. Um, but now Camtasia has come up with some awesome, awesome stuff. And you can almost do the same thing in Camtasia that is, as you can in Screencastify. I, I don't know if Camtasia has a free version. Anybody know that? Um, if Camtasia now has a free version or if it's a, it's a purchase thing. I don't know if anybody knows. Um, yeah, recording, um, I'm kind of reading the comments of, if you haven't figured that out. Uh, recording, um, your students' processes is a, I can't even tell you how great that is for me, um, especially in a project-based class like I am. You cannot write down to tell me how to do something. I have to physically see you do it. And to physically see you do it um, just makes all the difference in the world. And I can so get to understand um, if you get it or not. As a matter of fact, I had to send my students home early today from class and that's what they're having to do. So this evening, guess what I get to do? Yes, watch videos of somebody else doing work. Whoop, whoop. Um, somebody, Jill just said she thinks Camtasia is still a purchase and I, I believe so too. I think so too. All right. So here's my contact information. This is my school information. Um, I didn't really say anything about myself because I had, there was a, a little bio on me in there, but I teach at East Ascension High School in Gonzales, Louisiana. We are halfway between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. So I um, can get to Baton Rouge quickly and I can get to New Orleans quickly. I work for Ascension Parish School Board. Um, we, uh, we're very fortunate in our district to have funding. Um, <sighs> beignets, yes. Um, so, you know, I, we are just very fortunate to be able to, to have what we have. And um, we honestly, in the COVID time, um, we were only down about 10 days without being in school. We started a week late uh, for this year, for the 2020-21 school year. But we only started late because students had to get laptops. And so we had to, because we turned laptops in, obviously, um, and we had to get them, get them back to them. Um, so we started a little late for that. But um, we were very fortunate that we did not miss any time. And unfortunately, this school year, not only did we have to deal with, you know, COVID, uh, we had five storms that came through our area uh, 
or bypassed us. We thought they were coming straight for us. And, you know, they took that little turn. turn any of you that live in the South so understand about storms and what they can and cannot do or will and will not do. So um, we did not have to make up any time for that either. So we were very fortunate. We got all of our holidays. We got all of our time off. We did have to give up a few early dismissals um, just to make up a little bit of time, but we were very fortunate that we were able to be virtual, especially when the storm decided at the last minute to, you know, take that turn and we could get, we can get online. So um, that's all I have for you. I hope this was informational uh, for you. Again, if there's anything you would like um, for me to answer or talk to you about, or just shoot me an email. Or if you have anything that you want to add right now or a question that you may want to ask right now, feel free to do so. I will, um, I'm always willing to help. And I love, uh, you know, we all teachers, we all educators, we share everything. We like to share our knowledge. We like to share our information and we like in return to, you know, get that feedback. We like feedback just as much as students like feedback. So um, anybody have any questions or concerns or, you know, thumbs down, thumbs up, uh, anything you want to add, I will gladly um, wait for you. All right. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope again, this was helpful for you. Um, some of it probably you already knew, but um, I'm hoping you got something out of it. At least one thing that you can take take back um, to your classroom or to your school. So thanks so much, guys. Y'all have the great summer. I will um, hopefully get to have a break in about five days and um, get to enjoy my summer a little bit. So thank y'all so, so very much. Have a great summer. And Look, I hope everybody has a great school year as well. I know we have all been through enough. Um, and that's why I played that video in the beginning. Um, so go back and watch it because it makes you laugh. I sent it to one of my teacher friends to view it before I posted it. And she's like, you know what? She was teaching summer school as well. She's like, man, I needed that today. So it's a little bit of, little bit of fun on that side. So thanks so much, guys. I will see you later. Have a great summer. Bye.